Ann Cooper of Master Roasters, Equilibrium Master Roasters. Yes. I am excited because we've had you on Rate of Rise before. Yep. And it was such a great conversation. Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, obviously, your wealth of knowledge. And you teach, you, you equip the future of roasting. I mean, this is what you do with your, your brand yep. and your day in and day out. We were just talking before we started recording about the, the pandemic and how you were just doing things remotely yes. with people, even yep. just like Online. seeing on FaceTime or whatever. Yep. Yeah. And you're, you're dedicated to it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it's definitely shown us other ways to do our training. So, you know, sort of we don't always have to have that face to face, you know, on site kind of interaction. And I think it's been really great for roasters to also realize that there's um, other avenues and opportunities to get access to someone, you know, like myself. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's been really fantastic. So you learning as a teacher in helping people to learn uh, is is a way that you stay sharp. But it's also something that, and I find this is true in, in what I do, where because you do it so often, you come to... Um, you come to arrive at certain methodologies that you know have better outcomes than others. And and so my first question to you here as we're talking is is about education. It's about learning. Yep. Um, what is the method that you've arrived at that brings about the best result when you're taking on a new client that wants to learn how to roast with excellence? Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely I was yeah, great question in the sense of I think I really started learning my training skills all the way back when I was a barista. So mm. that's how I started getting into training. And there was a little bit more of that kind of formal training that came along with um, learning how to do all of the accredited barista training. There was like structure in like some of the, the classes uh, with that. So I guess I wanted to take a little bit of that structure from those classes um, and see how to also apply that, you know, with the roasting. Um, but definitely, you know, it, it, it evolves, you know, over time, over the years. Um, but there's always that process of, you know, helping roasters connect with their knowledge about um, the green, how they're tasting, and then ha what that means then moving through into the roasting process. So. I've often got to be very fluid and move with the level of experience, you know, of the roaster, you know, kind of like reading your client and making sure that you can, you know, you might have like your set routine of I'll go in, I'll calibrate and taste with them, get an idea about how they have been roasting and what flavors they've been uh, producing. Um, this is if it's in like an on-site, you know, like training consult. And then they'll tell me, yeah, like a, um, there's no body or no sweetness. And so I go, great, now let's look at the profiles and let me show you where potentially that's missing in your roasting. So I'm a very big fan of helping people to show themselves about how they're roasting, maybe what they're missing, and then how they can better identify um, what to work on uh, with their roasting. And so there can be like a little bit of like a, a formula to whether it be an online consult or even my training courses where uh, you know, you've got completely either brand new people or really experienced people in the class. But the leveling aspect is that we get the same coffee and we roast it three different ways. Ah. So even for an experienced roaster, they have to learn a new bean, but they also have to learn a new machine as well. So whatever machine I'm using in my space. Um, so it's really great leveling. It doesn't matter whether you're experienced or inexperienced. They've all got to go through the same thought process about learning the green and then learning like touching base with the theory and then learning how to operate the roaster and then put everything into practice um, practically um, on the machine. So there's always an element of the theory um, and then the practical and then we taste and analyze and then we then re-roast based on the analysis from the from the roasting and wow. the tasting. That, that is a lot of stretching that a person has to go through. It's, it's a, probably frustrating it's for a, a lot of people. Yeah, it can be like, it's a pretty intense kind of two days if it's like the roasting course. But I'm very passionate about even like new people like that want to step into the world of roasting. I think it's really important that they get um, a taste of the reality of roasting. I'm, I'm not a very big fan of, you know, you go to a class and they go, here's the coffee, it changes color and here's the machine and you, you do this and press that and whatnot. I'm just like, no, we're getting in there, we're getting our hands dirty and you're going to learn how to be decisive because that's what's really important in roasting. And if you're not shown how to be decisive and what to focus on, then 
you're going to go ahead, you're going to set yourself up and then you're going to step back and go, well, no one told me I had to work out how to calculate the rate of rise or how to, how to work out my, my, um, my profile and, and how to taste properly. Like I did all this reading and I did all this, you know, kind of, kind of like peripheral kind of classes, but you, you really need to get, get in there and be a part of the decision making process. So it's really important, especially for new roasters, um, that they experience that. And the course is an opportunity for them to step away and go, do I like this or do I not like this? Mm. Or if they, if they don't like it, but they're still passionate about getting into coffee, how do they empower somebody else um, so they can then manage the business in another way and still be involved in roasting, but maybe not necessarily doing it themselves? Well, let's talk about that empowerment of other people because uh, half of the reason I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to know this uh, from you is the idea that, you know, I am, uh, I, just as you are aware of how many different um, apprentice roasters there are out there yes. that master roasters have to educate. Yes. Now, you're a professional roasting educator. Yep. And there's this whole train the trainer mentality. Yes. Right? So I guess the question I have is, how how does this work for people who aren't necessarily professional educators but need to step into the role of educating somebody yeah yep that's a wonderful question because i would probably say that's possibly sometimes where a roasting company might get into a, a bit of a pickle because if they themselves have never been shown how to communicate what they're doing because you might often hear some roasters go oh, i just know how to do it and if you just follow me then you'll work it out but if they're not actually, and so my role is I've got the opportunity to step back and analyze so then I can break it down and go, okay, well, if you want to learn how to roast, you want to do, um, you've got to learn about the different, you know, profile strategies in terms of roast levels. You need to know how they taste, but you also need to know the data that then contributes to that roast level. So then you know then what that data then means when you go back to your roaster. So there's got to be like a connection from how you operate the roaster to the final flavor. And there needs to be a really decent feedback loop. So if a roaster isn't documenting enough data to show themselves why they like or don't like a coffee, so then, they're better, so then they can show this their apprentice, okay, so our standard light roast is these parameters. And this is how you do that, you know, on this machine. Mm -hmm. And then here's our standard parameters for a medium roast and a dark roast. So then they know how it's created on the roaster. They then learn how to taste it and recognize it. And then they're also seeing the structure of the profile that creates that that flavor. Uh -huh. So there's got to be a really decent feedback loop from the data that we collect as roasters through to tasting and then back to the data again, because there might be something that we want to fix or change um, as a result. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as a roaster, you would have had to already had those things in place and practicing them yourself. Yes. Rather than just making a special exception for the fact that you're training an apprentice roaster. And then all of a sudden, we, you know, we never do these things, but because you're being educated, we're going to, we're going to teach you these things this way. Yeah. Like that feedback loop has to be an institution in the business. Yep. Yeah. And I think, cause what can happen, you know, when you have an apprentice is that they get stuck following then they're, they're not in an opportunity where they have to start making decisions. And yeah. that's when they, they do get frustrated, 100%. They definitely get to a point where, well, how do I know what to do when, th when things start going off track? And that's when you've got to step in and help them and show them, okay, well, if it's going too fast, you do this. If it's going too slow, you make this decision. Because um, there's definitely a point where they're just like, well, I'm just pressing buttons and following steps and that's it really so yeah How and, and then they're not being that they, they don't get a chance to activate the creative part of roasting um with that process and when you say creative you're not talking about like changing the roast profile that they're taught you're talking about just reaching into the tool bag of of the you know here if this is the scenario here's the tool to fix that yes yep right. but also too like they're, they're definitely going to want to be in a position where Let's say they've spent, you know, whether it be six months to a year and they're very competent, um, very comfortable and confident at operating the roaster. They know all of the standard products inside out, back to front. And then they're given the opportunities to maybe create a profile for a new bean. 
Mm -hmm. And that's the scenario where you want them to be able to have the confidence to know, well, how do I start planning that, you know, that profile? How do I then best roast that coffee to express it in the best way based on their experience with what they've learned with the, you know, the stock products that they're doing day in, kind of day out. Yeah, that's yeah. hard because it, at first you want to have them be kind of a follower in some Correct. sense. Correct. Yeah, you need that consistency. Yeah. Right. And then they graduate. But Correct. you also have to have a lot of patience in the process. And if somebody is asking you a lot of questions, you know, this happens in barista, the, mm. the barista world mm. where people have this notion that, uh, well, I tried training this barista with me like for a week or two weeks, and I don't think they're going to work out because they're just not getting it. Yep. And and that seems kind of impatient to me, um, as if there is a, a a the right type of person. Not that there isn't some kind of personality trait that lends itself to being. You know, you have to be okay being alone for long periods of time. I'm sure to be a roaster. Yep. Yes. But I mean, a lot of this stuff is is not just like them it's how are you bringing them up yep yep yeah definitely okay. um and also too i mean like just as you were sort of chatting i was just kind of i had a, a, a an experience recently where um where i'm based we also um offer the roaster like for other roasters to rent time and they brought in um a new person um it was really interesting their background was production in manufacturing with coca-cola so they were used to operating machinery. They were very comfortable with process, you know, repeatability, all that kind of thing. Um, but it was probably over after about a month and they got a little bit too confident. Um, and they <laughs> kind of were, how do I say this? Um, they started like talking on the phone and, you know, doing all that kind of stuff because they learnt how to follow very easily. And then all of a sudden, you know, something happened on the roaster, the alarms start going off and they lose that that kind of like, it's the sense, you know, when you're roasting, you need to be connected with what the sounds and what's yes, going on on the yes. roaster. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, you've got, you know, alarms going off, machines going crazy and overheating and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it's just really fascinating, like, when you see and identifying the personalities and the, and the, the types of people that really suit roasting and then how to best guide them. And, um, yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, you know, I'm just curious about the reaction that most people would have in that situation and how much of that is, like nature versus nurture i suppose like yep, yep. in this scenario i would be tempted to think that that person would then say okay well i just need to know another thing and plug it in the same way so yep. that that doesn't happen again and, exactly. and it just goes whoosh. and yeah and yeah and 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 yeah they were definitely made aware of you know when to do certain things and not to do certain things and but i think that it's got a little bit overconfident um i'm not sure if they came if they're coming back um they might have gotten a little bit maybe nervous from, you know, that experience. <laughs> because they're going to burn the place was, down. No, I don't know. But yeah, it was, um, there's also that little bit of level of trust too, because, you know, they're, they're operating a machine and yeah, there's definitely potential for things to go wrong very quickly. Yeah. Um, so, but it was very fascinating for me stepping back, watching the whole thing sort of unfold. And it really just reminded me of that, you know, the, the, the type of people that are suitable for the role of a roaster, um, how we go through that process of showing them and then you've got to back away and let them you know let them take control um and then kind of learn yeah when things kind of <laughs> if they do and as we know in roasting the only way to learn is when you know things go wrong um as long as they don't keep on repeating it and it becomes a bit yeah. of a financial problem you know if things get lost you know like you lose coffee or you know things unnecessarily you know breakdowns and you know damage can get done to the equipment things like that so, okay yeah well that's interesting because you stepping back and, and allowing that feels like well how do you do that because this is your baby yes you, and, and you, yes you're you're just like look at youngin i don't <laughs> i don't want you to mess this up yep but and tells me that I should step back. I mean, what's the appropriate amount of hands off and hands on? Yeah, great question. Um, I mean, as long as you, f I feel as long as I've, because you've got to be careful about micromanaging, you know, because there's a point where, and I guess 
maybe for me too, like with training, I'm, I'm probably dealing with, you know, a lot more, you know, adults. So you've got to think about that adult education kind of mentality as well. And people do want to get to a point where they're like, yep, I'm all good. Just, you know, leave me alone. Let me kind of, you know, work it out. So I guess as long as I feel that they've had enough direction about, you know, safe operation of the roaster um, and if they choose to not follow those steps, then obviously that's when you have to step in and, you know, let them know, look, I really need you to follow these steps. And yeah, um, yeah. even like simple things like, you know, on, on this particular machine, you know, there's a, a certain number of roasts that you need to stop and empty the chafe. Um, but if you do it while you have a batch in the roaster, there's every opportunity that the airflow pressure switch is going to like, you know, sense that you know something's changed and it will shut the roaster down and then you lose a batch and you're in trouble all that kind of stuff yeah. so um yeah so you just gotta there's a there's a lot to kind of help remind them about but unfortunately they also kind of need to experience it so then it's like oh you told me not to do that and i just did it <laughs> yeah and at a certain point you 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 can you know take it on yourself to be a the educator and be like, oh they didn't get it, it must be my fault i'm gonna i'll, yeah, I'll possibly, adjust yep but then at a certain point, you're, maybe you have to make the decision that they're not the right person for this job. Yep. And if you're just too patient, maybe you'll miss that yes. too yep. far in. Yep. And I guess also, too, it's important that things are documented. Um, it is also great having like a procedure that's actually, you know, physically there as well. Like, um, like, yeah, like I'm here in another country and, you know, I'm trusting other people to walk in and, you know, use the roaster. But there are documents there for them to follow. Um, and of course, if they're not sure, they can always, you know, call me. But I think it's really important that you have that, um, that documentation as that kind of backup process to your processes as well. Right, yep. right. So you do these two day roasting courses. Yep. And these are just concentrated doses of education. Now we're talking about master roasters, educating apprentice roasters. Those are longer format. Yeah. Um, yep. But I want to e emphasize the word format because it feels like you need sort of a bookend. You need a beginning and end. Yep. Right. Yep. yep. Otherwise, you're just going to keep going, and you're never going to know when you're ready. Yep. yep. So, how would you go about creating a long format, like? Or, or an appropriately length format <laughs> of training. Yeah, I think um, because I often find like like the two day class I find is it's intense, but it's enough for people to kind of walk away with an idea of all of the reality and the decision making. But I have also recently created um, what I call like production roasting practice. So because there's always that little bit of well how do I keep this rolling? Like, what's next? Like, I've just learned all this amazing stuff in the class. How do I put it into practice? And so then I get them to come in and we actually do proper production roasting, um, actual products that are going out to customers. Um, and they get to see, you know, the whole proper process, you know, from, you know, morning to the end of the day. Um, there's that kind of aspect after the two day course. Um, but as far as like, like, you know, with an apprenticeship, you know, kind of program, um, I mean, I would probably approach that more in the, in the sense of they do need to sort of start following and I think staying focused on a specific product first and, you know, get very used to and know that product and then obviously move on to the next product because yeah. there is potential for a little bit of, um, how do I say, like a bit of nervousness and possibly confusion if they're you know changing things like kind of one too much. origin like you're going to just roast this particular but, brazil yeah or maybe just only. focus on this you know house blend and just you know nail that and really use that as your base point for then how to then move on to roasting the next product so yes. then they get enough because at the same time they're learning all of the ins and outs of operating the roaster um, they're also learning aspects of the profile um, and then of course they're also learning about the flavors um, you know that come along with that particular product yeah. and that, that roasting yeah so you know whether it could you know whether whether it's over a month or three months or six months it's just would just depend on how they you know progress and i guess you would have to sort of come up with some good measurable um ways to kind of show them okay you're you know you've you've, you've nailed that let's move on to the next next one from there yeah, yeah and you you mentioned the tracking and and having that because otherwise you could have people roasting 
Yep. This, this happens when people do shadow shifts on, on uh, coffee bars. Yep. They're supposed to be training on the bar, but they're actually just doing dishes. They're not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. And yep. You're, not, you're not paying yep. attention to them. Yeah. Or, you know, unfortunately, like you don't want to shove them off over into packing and they're just like putting stickers on bags and doing all of that, which is yeah. super important in roasting as well. Sure. I mean, sure. I know I'm, while I'm roasting, my the first you know, the ma that magic first five minutes is all about getting bags ready and, you know, trying to make up for time. So because, you know, when you get to the end of the day and you kind of go, oh, now I've got to pack everything. Uh. <laughs> um, and bag preparation can be, you know, okay. a, a little bit cumbersome. And yeah, you don't want to flick them off. And, and I would unfortunately probably see that if a roaster isn't confident enough to be able to guide that apprentice you know thoroughly enough so um so it would be it would be a shame if this person came in and then all of a sudden that they're just focusing on everything but you know the roasting exactly yep. yeah true yep. uh the the words thoroughly enough and also this well it wasn't a word but it was a sigh that you let out yeah at, <laughs> at the thought of being at the end of a long roast day yes. and obviously you can't really you're going to learn something deep and visceral at that moment but when you're training, you have to know when to stop. Like if I'm training baristas, yes, they're not going to retain information past a certain point. So no. how do how do we recognize that? Because a, a, a roaster who's really intuitive about what they're doing and now they're tasked with educating, they're uncomfortable, and now they might make the the trainee feel uncomfortable by just obliterating them by being thorough, right? Yeah, possibly. So I guess that would, you know, you would really want to make sure that there's like the structure in terms of um, showing them how to plan the roast day, like setting expectations for the day. I think that would be super important. So then they can come in, they know that they've got to come in, you know, turn on the roaster, whether they, you know, need to be do a little bit of spot cleaning, um, scoop out the green, map out the roast log production mm -hmm. for the day. And then that also know, they then know, you know, what kind of packaging they need to start preparing. Um, so then they've got, like, there should be like a really good structure to that whole process. So then the um, the apprentice knows at least they're, what they're walking into um, and how long it's going to take. Um, I think it's super important to have that, you know, those expectations laid down. So then there's that, that, that not that potential of, if it's a really busy day, at least they know that they're in for a good maybe three, four, five hours roasting. Yeah. But at the end of that, they've also got to pack. Then you've got to clean, you know, and you've got to make sure that everything's basically reset to do it all over again the next yeah. day. So I, you would want to have that, that work day flow, the expectation laid out very clearly. Yeah, because you're psychologically preparing them. 100%. For yep. it. Yep. And, and because you can't go, oh, by the way, we're going to roast. Oh, no, no, no. Now we're going to go pack. Oh, no, wait. Now we have to go and do this. And it'd be like, oh, yeah. whoa, what do you want me to do? So overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. And and traumatic. I mean, not to throw the word around lightly, but yep. in some definitions of trauma is just you you have no control over a situation. Yep. yep. No expectation. You're just on long for the ride and it's yep. not a fun ride. No, it's not. And especially if, um, again, whoever's tr training them is also not like showing them if they're just telling them that's when it's definitely not gonna it's not gonna work um okay. they need to be there needs to be like a goal and how they're showing them but and also explaining why and and this is where you know with especially if you're working with the brand like helping them really understand this product needs to be roasted this way because it has a specific end goal for the customer. Um, yeah. So then you don't start, you don't want to create, <laughs> I call them rogue roasters where you don't want to sort of like, if, because you know, as roasters, there's, there's some products that you just kind of go, oh, I just, this product just does my head in, but I know it, it's a really good, you know, seller for the company. <laughs> yes. Um, as long as you're very clear and upfront about, you know, why it's being roasted a certain way. Um, and then there's no, you know, potential for this person to go, oh, I wasn't told that I had to follow this. I'm going to try and maybe try something different or pull it out at a different temperature um, right, because right, that's okay. the current trend at the moment. And unfortunately, I've seen companies that have been completely crippled um, when there's no clear direction from the top down yeah. and a roaster just can just go off on a massive tangent and really change, yeah. you know, a product that built a company and all of a sudden it's not, it's not that product anymore. So there needs to be good, good structure from top down, which brings in another whole level of, you know, management and, um, you know, I guess confidence 
from whether it be management, owners, and their direction th to the roasters about what they want to achieve with their roasting and products. You, you bring up something very good, which is most people think they've communicated and they haven't. Yeah. Yep. And so you're talking it's about the rogue roasters. Well, they never said this. And they say, well, we shouldn't have to say that. Yep. You're an adult. You yep. know, figure it out. But we can't just assume that, can we? No, no, definitely not. And I think, and also maybe, you know, I could be assuming a bit too much. Sometimes in the industry, people are a little bit nervous about their ability to taste and communicate. And maybe sometimes if, a, if an owner isn't confident, they just kind of know it works and uh, they can't communicate yeah. why it works in terms of the, the flavor and the taste. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, if that's then not communicated, you know, to the roaster, then the roaster's going to go, well, you know, it might taste better this way, so I'm going to take it in this direction. But, yeah, so I think, yeah. yeah, tasting can sort of play a role in that or a bit, bit of nervousness there as well, but, yeah. Well, you have an outline for what you want them to learn throughout the day, yep. and you say, look at, this is how it's going to go from, you know, the week one, month one, to the end of three or four, maybe six months or so. Yeah, I um, think there needs to be measurable goals for yeah, sure. Yeah, milestones that yep. they can reach, yep. Yep. Um, micro and macro. Yep. Now, for me, as the educator, how do I hold myself accountable? Do I have a separate list of things that I'm making sure that I cover with them through the day while they're in those stations so that I'm just, you know, planning for myself? I, I'd say so, yeah. Um, okay. I mean, because, you know, no doubt, um, yeah, as long as we're clear, because there's like, the, like I think, okay, so like there's the milestones, there's like the things to achieve. So if we know that the things that they're working on is going to help them get to a certain milestone, then that's also going to keep us in line with, yeah. you know, we, it might prevent us from either leapfrogging to you know, something that's meant to happen in the next stage of the training, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. It'll it'll help us to kind of hold back and not overwhelm them um, with, with too much because yeah. it's funny how you said the word, um, was it like terrifying or kind of like trauma? Yeah, trauma. Yeah. Because I often say the most traumatic part of roasting is learning how to um, start the roast and end the roast. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, it is important that we, we kind of, and also, yeah, gauging their um their ability and their pace at how they you know take on information and how they then perform those tasks as well yeah. um but also recognizing and giving them the chance to we might also have to change our style of how we train and communicate relevant to where they're at as well and you know i might be really um i might like using a certain training tool but that person just doesn't connect with it. It's just not their style. Right. Maybe they like using um, more tangible pen and paper versus if I'm forcing them to use software and they're just like, my, my brain just can't, I just can't deal with that. And I'm going, and I'll be like, nope, that's it. But if, if we recognize that they are still a really good fit for the role, then it's up to me to find other ways to help facilitate that, you know, yeah. that learning process. Um, so there's definitely nothing wrong with, you know, changing the tools or changing the way we help them learn. Yeah. As long as, you know, at the end of the day, they're getting to that end goal and achieving those milestones. So I think that's possibly where maybe, you know, some apprenticeships could get a little bit maybe screwed up because there's not a, that we're not recognizing how they also best learn. And, and I often have to do that sometimes in my classes where I've actually got to just kind of pull back and go, okay, well, maybe this uh, format isn't working for this person. Yeah. Let's try something else. And I'm, most of the time it'll, it will possibly be the people completely new, you know, to roasting and they want to explore and learn, is this for me? And sometimes the software is just, yeah, it's, it's a lot <laughs> because, you know, you're watching the roaster, you're watching the software, you're trying to make decisions on how to manage and control the roaster, but also you've got numbers just and lines all <laughs> over the place and yeah. it's just kind of like, wow, what is going on? So if it means using pen and paper and making notes and if that's what helps them start to connect with the process, then so be it. Like, I mean... Yeah. You would only have it, it. You're you're talking about earlier having the tools at their disposal to make decisions and be decisive. Yep. And and you can be creative in that um, because 100%. you've got right. 
But now as a educator, you also have to have your own tools. Yep. And you're not just showing them the ropes and, and, and roasting. You have to learn a variety of ways to communicate roasting. Yep, absolutely. And actually, I really love when you get those situations where if I recognize that some of my tools might not be working, I get a chance to be creative as well because I get to create new tools. <laughs> so it's actually kind of cool. Yeah. So there's definitely different versions of, you know, some of my training tools over the years that have just evolved in response to um, just people's learning needs basically yeah, yeah so absolutely a lot of a lot of potential is left on uh, on the floor in situations where we are not doing the kind of thing you were just describing which is learning as a teacher um, and people are not learning properly and they're left to fend for themselves they're yep. in fight or flight all the time yeah and we're tasting the literally tasting the results and the cumulative effect of that seems like like you couldn't pin it down and so it's not like this issue that we're always talking about but it's there it's in the ether just bad information yes bad teaching of information yes. leads yes. to bad coffee yes yep man well, I'm glad we have you teaching coffee. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think, I think this was really educational to get in, in, some insights into how we need to kind of craft our uh, approach to helping people craft coffee. It's perfect. Yeah, and, and I think it's more than anything. It's like as long as people have an opportunity to, they've got to show themselves about what, like show themselves what they're doing. So then they can analyze it and then they can decide, do they like it or do they not like it? And if they don't like it, it's right in front of them. Like they know then what to then try and target and change. And then they know how to go back to the roasting and try and fix whatever it was that they didn't like. So I'm a really big fan of that whole big feedback loop. And it's kind of like funny to say, but it's probably one of the hardest things I have to work with roasters is taking them through that process of showing themselves because they're so busy just like smashing out their production and getting the day-to-day -day done that they start to slip and they don't show themselves enough either in like taking notes or doing their roast log sheets and uh, all that kind of stuff so they get that is kind of go oh I know that product really well you know it's fine but when they have to go and then train somebody if they don't have a record of showing themselves why they like that product and how it's roasted that's when it starts getting yeah really hard and unfortunately that's when you know things get a bit inconsistent and yeah the whole process of sort of starts from there <laughs> but but even for those you know people that are learning whether they're like um doesn't matter whether you're a home roaster beginner professional or whatnot you've got to go through that process of showing yourself yep awesome well, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. Anne. Yeah, thank you so much for it. chatting to me again. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic too. <laughs>